Well, folks, I had a late nap. I also had a late dinner. And I'm sitting here with the TV on and no sound. You know what that means. It means nothing worth watching. So it has been suggested to me that I read some of my stories. And I've been thinking about it already because some of the stories I've written uh, work better if I do read them because I can get more detail into the story and you can get the effect. So, now the story I'm going to tell you now is from my book. This book right here. And if you've got that book, just go to page 97 and you can follow right along with me while I read. Make sure I get it right. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to start reading my story to you and see if you like it that way. If you do, I'll read more stories. So this little story, not very long, <clears throat> I entitled it, Going to Akron. Akron is in Ohio. And George worked for the railroad company. He could get free passes for him and his wife to travel on the train. Her name was Fanny. If you can picture Mutt and Jeff, that's what you had in husband and wife. George was a tall, rather handsome man. Fanny was short more like Aunt B type with a touch of, well, she was down home country. Her hair was fixed in a short perm and she wore wire rim glasses low on her nose. She also had a high pitched whiny voice that could grate on the nerves at times. Fanny's family was from a small community near us called Rockhold. She called it Rocco. She dipped enough, cleared her throat a lot, and I do mean a lot. Every day, she would come to our house while we kids ate dinner and then hurried back to school. Mama cooked a hot meal each day at noon and we ate the leftovers for supper that night. Fanny sat at the corner of our kitchen table while we ate, dipping her snuff and clearing her throat. If she told a story once, she told it a hundred times, day after day and week after week. She had a niece named Harriet Ellen, and over and over we heard the same tale about Harriet Ellen. My younger brother, who was about 12 at the time, had a very weak stomach. Every time Fanny cleared her throat and spit into her little tin can, my brother's face would turn a shade whiter and then blew around the mouth. He would push the ch kitchen chair back and make a mad dash to the bathroom. For his benefit, sometimes Mama would catch Fanny at the front door and suggest they sit on the porch swing while we kids ate our dinner. I'm going to pause here because my nose is itching and I can't keep reading until I take care of that. Okay. Move on down. One day, George came home from work and told Fanny he had train passes for them to go to Akron, Ohio to visit her brother Archie. Well, day by day, she told us she was going to Akron, Ohio to see Archie. The day came. She packed a small suitcase for both her and George. <clears throat> they walked downtown to the depot station and boarded the train to Akron. This was to be Fanny's first train ride. It was about 10 o'clock at night. 
when the train pulled into the station at Akron. George spotted a taxi cab and motioned to the driver to pick them up. While the driver loaded the suitcases in the trunk of the taxi, George and Fanny climbed into the back seat. Fanny was pretty ill at ease because first, this was her first train ride. Second, she was in a strange town. And third, she didn't like the looks of the taxi driver. He wore his cap pulled down where she couldn't get a good look at his eyes. She wasn't real sure he could be trusted. However, since George was by her side and he was larger than the taxi driver, she felt somewhat secure. While riding along, George was looking out the window of the night lights. Fanny had her eyes glued to the back of the head of the taxi driver. She thought she could hear him talking to somebody. He held a little black thing up to his mouth when he talked. Then she could hear another voice talking back, but she couldn't figure where the voice was coming from or understand what he was saying. She began to get nervous. She started elbowing George, who just ignored her and kept looking out the window. Then Fanny heard the driver say something else. What did he say? Well, I've lost my place. Okay. She still couldn't understand him. And when she heard that other person talking back to him, she got more scared. She nudged George. He still paid no attention to her. Fanny began thinking. That driver's talking to someone on that little black box, and he's planning on taking us out in the country somewhere, and he's going to rob us and kill us. She couldn't get that thought out of her head. Fanny was about to wet her pants. She twisted and turned and kept leaning forward and listening every time the driver said something in that little black thing. He held up to his mouth. Oh, Lord of mercy in heaven, we're going to die. She still couldn't get George's attention. She was trying to tell him that driver was going to take us out in the country somewhere and he's going to rob us and kill us. It took about 30 minutes to get to Archie's house. And by then, Fanny was so distraught she was weak and in a nervous tizzy. Of course, you know that the little black thing the driver was talking into was the car radio electronically connected to the taxi station. Inventions totally new to Fanny. Week after week, Fanny came, sat at the corner of our kitchen table and we heard that same story about her trip to Akron, Ohio, while we ate dinner. With her honking, coughing, spitting her snuff, clearing her throat and saying, he was going to take us out in the country somewhere and rob us and kill us. And my white-faced little brother was making a mad dash every time to the bathroom. When Fanny joined us each day at the kitchen table, my sister and I watched and grinned as the kid's face went from gray to white and he jumped from the table, making his mad dash to the bathroom. Now, that's my little story about Fanny and George going to Akron, Ohio. I'm going to go years ahead now. Fanny and George are both gone. Mama's in the nursing home. Mama's 99 years old. My sister and I are there for the weekend. And of course, each day at noon, 
we go to the dining room, join other residents at the nursing home for lunch. And those few who still were mentally alert would talk back and forth across the room. And there was one lady over in the corner. We could hear her giggle. She had a high-pitched voice, she was a heavy-set lady, short perm, kind of frizzy hair. And she kept laughing. And every now and then she'd look over at Mama and wave, wave at Mama. Mama would shake her head back. So finally my sister said, Mama, who is that lady? that keep motioning to you. Do you know her? She said, oh yeah. That's Fanny's niece, Hardella. Well, that's my story tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. It's just a simple story, but it's the way life was back then. You can imagine getting on a train your first time, leaving from a small town, going to the big city. Akron was a big city compared to where we lived. And this lady, I guess almost every day, if it wasn't raining or snowing, she appeared at our front door. And in the summertime, she sat on the front porch with my mother and they would talk. Now, I will say this about Fanny. Every time mama was ready to deliver another baby and old Doc Smith was coming to the house, all of us kids had to be homed out to the neighbors. And Fanny always took one or two of us kids to spend the night at her house until the new baby was born the next morning. So, that's my little story for today. And if you've got the book, go back and read it again. I think you'll appreciate it more now that you know who Fanny was, the kind of person she was. And she and George lived in that same house until the day they died. They were our oldest neighbors. So, I'm going to think more about reading stories to you. I don't want to read too many to you because you might not buy my book. So I've shown you that book. Again, I've got the second book. I'll show that to you too. See me, that's me. You see all those little pictures? I'm telling a story. Well, you could figure that out without me having to tell you. And I had come up with too many stories, so I had to have two different books. You can see this book has 73 stories in it. The other one has 100 stories. Where did I come up with that many stories? Well, it's not hard to do when there were nine kids in the family. And when your mother was one of 13 kids, your dad was one of 11. Oh, you can come up with some stories. And I tell you what, you can add a new list of names for those people who are going to have new babies. You can give them a list of old-fashioned names that they can pick from. You've already read my story about naming your baby. So we may have some more names to add to the list. Give you a better choice with your getting ready to be a grandmother or great-grandmother for the first time. So this is Hold it, Lord, hold it. The idea is, 
I have more stories to tell. I'm not ready to go anywhere yet. So, and it says, I'm not finished yet. I think you people know that. As long as I can continue telling you stories, I'm going to. And I hope you want to hear the stories too. So, you have a good night. Good night's sleep. Maybe you'll watch this video and it'll make you sleep sound. Get up bright and cheery tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning is Sunday. I hope it's a pretty day and I hope you're going to worship the Lord tomorrow. Good night.